this, just to break this down, uh, to be honest, white folks are scared as hell. Not Some folks. white folks. No, no, no. Just, just <laughs> a lot of white folks. More, more, more than want to admit it. That this country no longer looks, sounds, or moves the way it once did. Mm -hmm. The Browning of America. And that that reality uh, is is a, right now for many communities an unreconcilable reality. That in less than ten years the white majority in this country will no longer exist as we know it. It will have changed, we see it in this great state, we see it particularly now in, in the southern states. Uh, when you look at the growth of Hispanic community, for example, it is scaring the bejesus out of people. Yep. And so you have this, this sense of wanting to hold on to bygone days, whatever the hell that is, I don't know, <laughs> because those days weren't so great for my neighborhood. Yeah. So I, I, I prefer the gone and the bygone, yeah. to be honest. But that is, that is the hard reality that we need to deal with. And you see this narrative being played out in the lives cut short uh, in community after community uh, across the nation of young black men and how the responses to that are very different. The white community looks at that and goes, well, he was a criminal. Naturally, you shoot him. Black community go, no, black lives matter. And the reconciliation of that is where we are right now. How do we as a country begin to understand when it, members of the black community start talking, and I tell this to Republicans especially, when we talk about, when you hear us say that, it's not saying that our lives are over value more than yours. It's saying, can you at least take a moment to understand that our lives, our lives do matter? Yeah. That it does, yeah. it makes a yeah. difference. That's all, we're, that's all we're saying. It's not complicated. 